Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our first installment of Tarragon Chez Vous. I'm Mike Payette. I am in the comfort of my home in Jajage, uh, which is uh, colonially known as uh, Toronto. Uh, it is a pleasure to welcome you to this evening's pre-show chat with Rosa Laborde. I am Mike Payette, Artistic Director of Tarragon, and welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, I do want to acknowledge that, as I mentioned, I am in the comfort of my home in Tijage, uh, on traditional territory of the Anishinaabe, the Chippewa, the Wendat, the Haudenosaunee, and the Mississaugas of the Credit. Uh, we do welcome you to write uh, any comments or questions you may have uh, for our guest, Rosa, uh, in the chat function. We'll get to as many as we can, but this is a brief uh, conversation just before we go live for our opening night virtual offering of light. And so without further ado, allow me to introduce our wonderful guest, Rosa Laborde. Hi. Hey Rosa, it's good. It's good to see you. I know it's in within the virtual within the virtual format. We're in your home, and uh, and uh, for those who uh, who don't know, Rosa also did a project with Factory Theater uh, a week or so uh, ago, and we were also welcomed into your home. So thanks for inviting us again. It's like my new thing. It's 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 the true version of home theater. His home theater. You got the equipment and everything going on. Yeah. So, so Rosa, I mean, the last time we saw each other, it was during closing of the live offering of, of Light, which was nine performances in, in one week. And it was a very uh, sort of truncated, but in quick and celebratory process. But I'm just curious from your perspective, it's been a few days now, a couple of days now, how is it to be making this offering, this virtual offering from that live experience? Where are you at? What are you thinking on this opening night? Well, uh, it's it's been a really interesting process. I mean, because of Omicron and everything that shifted, we began all of our rehearsals virtually yeah. um, to keep the cast protected from COVID. So it's almost like a return to the beginning, <laughs> like virtual to virtual. Um, and then when we moved, it was an incredible experience to move into the actual space, but then we were all masked and it was, honestly, I've never had a process like it where we didn't do a run through until a, I think two or three days before we started filming this. Um, and so it really is more of an opening for you at home than it even was in the space because you were seeing it before an audience ever saw it at all uh, mm -hmm. because we actually filmed it before it, it went up in the space. Of course, it was so beautiful to be live and to share that experience. Um, and uh, and by the time we were finished, we were just ready to go. We were ready to keep going. And now we are just in another format, you know? And um, I think that's exciting that now people in other cities or who didn't feel yet safe together can have an experience. And that's exactly it. I think, you know, in this in this time, as we're sort of navigating this re-entry into theater, there there's certainly an apprehension from artists, from audiences, certainly uh, alike. And like, what is that, you know, welcoming back into the actual theatrical environment? And so being able to still keep art alive and keep your work alive and keep these stories alive is essentially our, you know, our, our motive, our, obje our complete objective. And so this is an offering that will be on demand for the next couple of weeks. So um, I, I will say it is something that I'm very, very excited uh, for our patrons to experience because yes, as you mentioned, it was before the public actually saw the show, but uh, it's in, in and of itself, its own sort of capsule, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, absolutely. Rosa, can you speak a little bit about <clears throat> the, the origins of creating light? What if this has been a process for you in terms of development and creation, uh, certainly alongside my, my predecessor, Richard Rose, you've been developing this for a hot minute now. Can you speak a little bit about what was the launching, um, Pat, for your, for this oeuvre? Um, I've always, well, I come by it honestly, been very interested in spirituality. I, I am a big lover of the ashram and yoga and all of that, um, especially my father definitely um, 
brought me into that world. It was something that really fascinated him always. He was often away on retreat. And he, I, I, when I was maybe 17 or 18, I told him, I confessed that I could see energy uh, fields of light around people. And he was like, we have to get you to India to your guru. And I didn't go. I went to theater school instead. Um, <laughs> and I also don't know that I can still see energy uh, <laughs> outlines around people. And possibly, you know, I was in high school. I was smoking marijuana. Was it real? Who knows? The point is, um, I've been very, uh, I've always been so moved by the teachings. Um, and the teachings really speak to non-duality. Um, the spiritual teaching that I'm speaking of, you know, I'm talking about Buddhism, Hinduism, Sufism, like all of these wisdom teachings that point to a, a certain way that we experience existence. Um, and yet I, in, in attending different classes and learning, found that often the teachers were quite, uh, I don't like to use the word flawed, but definitely very human. Right. And I thought that was so interesting. People really are against that. Our society really has very high expectations of people that they should be all good or they're either all good or all bad. We live in a very black and white divisive world. And this is a world that actually embraces the whole, the all of us. And I wanted to look at this world from the lens of relationship and that you can both be a beautiful person trying to do good, but make mistakes at the same time. And the only thing that we can do, I believe, is kind of our best. And if we have made mistakes, and we have as humanity, obviously, is try to, you know, truth and reconciliation, like versions of how do you stand up and take responsibility for yourself? Mm -hmm. and, and how do you offer your sincere apology while also inviting a process for uh, transcending, transcending difficulties in a relationship um, mm -hmm. and using sort of the teaching as a, as a platform for this. And it's also huge in our world right now, meditation, every, people are turning to it because mental health challenges are, I mean, at a rate so much higher than ever before. And so we're really looking for an end to suffering, like looking for a way that we can acknowledge that there is suffering, but how do we live with it? So those were some of the things that I was really looking at exploring in the work. I think you, you've hit on a, a few things there, Rosa, that I think, you know, speak to the fascinating timeliness of this piece, but I want to speak about the generational, uh, the generational scope that you have within the characters and that very question of, certainly spirituality, but our relationship to each other. Um, and what do you think has changed or has anything changed, I guess, through time? When we look at our younger generations today versus perhaps a, a, a wiser, older thought, what, what scope has actually shifted? Are we, do you actually think we're more open? Are we still in that black and white? perspective? Uh, are things a little bit gray? Are we embracing the gray? Or is everyone embracing the gray? Or like, what do you think about that? I mean, I love this question, but it also, it, it invokes in me a bigger question, which is what is time? Um, like, <laughs> and are we linear? Or are we on a continuum? Because when you look back to some of like, look, go back to Greek tragedies, or Shakespeare, or and you go, is it so different now than it was? even going back to the biblical stories, the Old Testament, is it so different now than it was? I don't know. I wonder if we are in patterns of repetence. I, I, I actually, so you're asking a question that for me doesn't, um, because when you say like, is it better now? I think in some places for some people it is. And yet are there some places where women are still being stoned to death? Are there some places where you're killed for being, um, you know, homosexual, like other, other queer, other than, you know, that we are, yeah, sure. But also I think like, yeah, sure. We're better in some places, but also there's more black and white now than I, I even remember from when I was younger. So I don't know. And I just wonder if we're always kind of, there's this evolution that we are constantly both moving through this cycle.
I hear that. I hear that. I know. It doesn't answer the question no. at all. It's like the world of unanswerable <laughs> questions that you've entered. But I mean, you're you're bringing up this. I know this is this. We I feel like we can have this exchange for the duration <laughs> of the show itself. And uh, but I think in that quest for uh, for uh, diminishing or 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 trying to shorten the gap between divisiveness is that there's still but in doing that we create more separation. In in something we can create more separation. And so within that, it's such a fascinating time to be alive, right? Yeah. Many, many spheres. Certainly, I mean, we're in, we're in war right now within the world. And so a piece like this comes at a time when we are looking inwardly as, as equally as we're looking towards each other. And I want to, I want to hear, like, what, what is Rosa Laborde's, like, utopia? What does that look like? I mean, I think it's, I, I uh, you know, the line from the poem, the mind is in its own place and in itself can make a hell of, of heaven, a heaven of hell. Mm. I, I really think that, I think we're here. I think it's beautiful here. Mm. I think that we are many things as, as humans and it's the rejection of aspects of ourselves, aspects of ourselves, which are then in turn just aspects of each other that is what's so harming, that separation from, from each other and from our own vast humanity, which is both happy and sad, good and bad. And so what I hope for, in a way, the play gets to a world of utopia that I believe in is that the most that we can do is acknowledge when we have wronged, acknowledge when we've been at fault, take responsibility and care very deeply about each other. Like I don't, there's no utopia like, and then we're just happy all the time. I don't think that's a real thing. I don't think that's what being human is about. I think it's about being able to hold all of it and being able to see and receive each other. Um, and I think something, I mean, I, I really don't believe there are any bad women's play, you know, whatever a bad person is, you know, I think often it's like we, we've buried a lot of aspects of ourselves. It's a lot of people trying, trying to find their way. And to me, that is relationship. Like a relationship isn't always perfect. Though I have many relationships that I consider sort of perfect. Relationship is, can we talk about it? Can we hit a point where we go, oh, that was challenging. And can we then discuss what that meant? And can we grow from it? And I think there's a, there's a part in the play where the character Michael does say, like, there is no better. He's a teacher. There's no right way. There's no, it's just all of it. We're just, all we're doing is trying mm. to find our, our peace. And I think we do that together, together. I, th I don't think that's a, a, a unitary, like a solo act. Yeah. I think it's a really, it's, it's an act of relation. And I like I like the fact that you framed it within the, as a as an act because it is an act of quest, right? It is something that it's a it's a it's an act of pursuit of that, right? Or an act of investigation of that, as opposed to a, a solving. There is no actual solution, which is no. being in a different way. But um, I love that. I love that very much, and that's why I love this play. And um, I think you know, Rosa. I want to talk a little bit more about. Um, uh, process or your relationship to this play itself and you've already mentioned Michael uh, and folks don't don't have, don't have any context as to uh, as to who Michael is and yeah. we won't say anything further that uh, than that but can you speak about like maybe a moment whether it be <clears throat> in the process or in the writing or in seeing it that really, really struck you? Is there a favorite, that sounds so penultimate, but is there like a lingering um, moment for you that you want to share uh, for folks to have in the back of their minds as they're watching tonight? Well, there is definitely in, and it's one of my, my favorite lines, not that I didn't write, but I put in the play. Um, or would you rather be right or would you rather be happy? And what takes Michael there? And then there's a candle that I love. Mm -hmm. I need to wait for the candle. The thing of. There's a. Can you. Well, you, you set this play, <clears throat> this piece, this story in the mountains. Mm -hmm. In 
the, in this retreat. Mm -hmm. And that's, I mean, there's no secret about that. Um, sure, sure, the environments change within the retreat mm -hmm. or within the mountains. But this notion of escape is, well, well I'll frame it as escape. But well, the, re the retreating, the escape. Yeah. You know, why was that important? Why was that environment important to you? Setting it in a retreat as opposed to asking those questions within the frame of, like, let's say, within our contemporary urban contemporary lives that you and I lead? Well, there is, uh, I think it can be easier to go to the mountains or go to the retreat center. There is this, there is a saying, and I think I put this in the blade, wherever you go, there you are. Like wherever you are, you take you with you. But there is a, 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 an aspect of escape from the struggle that, that you can find when you go out and you're in nature and your life is beautiful vegetarian food and meditating every day. And you can kind of let some of what's challenging in the world go, which is a path that I find extremely appealing and yet not one that I'm interested in because I like being in it. I like being in the world. Mm -hmm. But what I like, I've said it in this world but even though I have the major struggle, the major issue that's coming is coming anyways. Mm -hmm. You know, like you can't, no matter where you go, there you are. No matter where and, you are yeah. and so I think it was that, it was that you can go there, but everything that's coming for you, your life will come to tear you open, no matter where you hide. If there's something you have to learn on this path, in this incarnation, whether or not that's something you believe in or not, this moment you have in your lifetime, if there's something you need to learn, you're going to get those lessons wherever you are. They're going to come for you. Um, mm. And yeah, so. I love, and, I, and I love that, anyway, there's a reference in terms of Mukti, right? In yeah. particular. So, um, which, which is actually one of my favorite uh, lines, uh, favorite moments, uh, is that, <laughs> anyway. Uh, it's so hard to not give it away. I won't. I won't give it away. But it's, <laughs> such a, it's, such a, it's a it's a it's a very quick moment, but it's so profound because it hits you like you're like, oh damn, you're like absolutely, and it's in the context certainly of of other things that are happening within the piece itself, but it's it's it, it doesn't ring any truer than that particular moment, and it res that certainly resonates for me, uh, and uh, and and is a constant thought. Um, Rosa, in the in the few minutes that we have left, I want to talk about your you as an artist, you as a multifaceted, multi-disciplined practitioner, and uh, you're you know you've been so so busy. Uh, you're also a parent, right? And, yeah. Um, and so now uh, after this work, what are things that you are looking forward to in the future? Let's look beyond. Let's look beyond light. And what can we what can we look forward to? What are you looking forward to? Well, I am, you know, light is still my baby right now. So I'm going to be polishing her and taking care of her. So hopefully she can live on. And then I have the two new plays that I'm working on. Um, getting them ready. And I'm headed back into television world. So I have to go back into um writing a pilot. I'm writing with a, a co a co author uh, that we got funding for. And then also a web series I co-created is moving forward. So it's just, I'm moving back into the television world a little bit, but while still working on my other two new plays, which I'm, which I'm really excited about. Basically this project is a snapshot of your life. Like there's just like this platform, like just shifting from the theater yeah. to a little bit, like a little bit. A little bit like it was interesting when we were filming the play and I was watching I just thought god it's all converging you know I was watching the monitors yeah. filming the actors on stage I'm like this is basically like my other life they're all coming together now um yeah so it's it's, it's really interesting but I I think the truth is still what I am most passionate about I just like telling stories whether I'm telling stories as a as a writer or an actor or a director, or, you know, the short story collection I've been working on quietly in the background, that it's just about stories because they, 
I think stories are one of the most profound ways that we learn from each other and that we have a sense of connection and communion. And so that's just the path. Uh, not always the easy path, I think, I'll be honest. <laughs> World of storytelling, sometimes I'm like, she's been doctor. <laughs> right, right, right. Um, that's another way to really help people. Um, but but it's it's something that I'm I'm still so so passionate about, so engaged in. So it just continues. Um, I want to thank you for um, for your work and for your words and your thought and your care uh, that you've given to this piece and into you know this certainly in this conversation, which is just folks, which is just a glimpse of. Of, of Rosa, uh, the dynamism and fantasticness of Rosa, uh, that I've been really, I will say that I've been really fortunate in my brief time so far with Tarragon. It has been an absolute pleasure to um, launch this new chapter of, of Tarragon with your story. And uh, I'm hyper excited for folks to, to witness this. And so Rosa, uh, it is just about that time before your second opening. And so I thank you. And thank you. Uh, you made me cry a little bit. <laughs> Sorry about that. That's or I should go like yes or no. <laughs> Not even know. But um, you know, I want you to celebrate and folks that are watching, please do let us know your thoughts um, uh, on, on the piece. This is an ongoing conversation. The work uh, like life is uh, well, it's a living document, you know, and so there's so much to uh, to unpack by virtue of everyone's experiences. So please do let us know your thoughts. Uh, in the meantime, thank you so much. Again, Rosa, love to you and your family and uh, enjoy. The thank you so much. Absolutely. Folks, uh, the, this is uh, about seven minutes before, uh, before the curtain opens. Please do take uh, a moment to, you know, grab a drink. Uh, whatever the tea or whatever you can't necessarily name and uh, in, enjoy the show. Bon spectacle.